And I started Taekwondo and Okido. Mm -hmm. It's one of my best friend's stepfathers. Um, he taught at a gymnastics studio, a pretty large one. It's actually still um, local, they're still there. And I was doing Taekwondo and Okido, um, more forms and stuff, more, a lot of pressure points and takedowns from there. And did it for a couple years and moved away to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And was in a band, a lot of traveling, and I lived up above, um, lived up above a coffee shop. It's at Raihan. I still talk to this day. It's awesome. Um, was always going to train after work and tell me about it. I always wanted to get in some sort of martial art, again, but not Taekwondo. I wanted something different, something a little bit more, I guess, aggressive mm -hmm. um, and active and fun and exhilarating than kind of Taekwondo smart, like inspiring stuff. And he was always like, come, come, come. And I kind of like, all right. He came one day to Minnesota Martial Arts Academy. We were located in St. Louis Park, right outside of Minneapolis. And I went there and was hooked. After I started, I was there five days a week, two classes in a row, three hours a day, almost every day. I just loved it. I loved yeah. it. it was, there was nothing like hitting pads for me then. I wanted to fight the first time I went to Thailand it was in 2002 and I was supposed to have my first fight there and mm -hmm. two weeks before that I got in a motor wreck there and the damn motor was and people drive like crazy. So I flew over the handlebars um, and just destroyed my knee. Mm -hmm. So that took the rest of my training out while I was there. I just went down to the beach and hung out there and hobbled around on one leg. And when I got back to the States I couldn't even train for a while. My, my knee was this big so there, was, there wasn't much I could do. Has that been a persistent injury? Like, does it come back or is it? Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, I try to rehab it on my own with a trainer and just do regular, you know, working out fitness, getting back to running, you know, step up, strengthening my leg back up. Um, and after two years of trying to just do it on my own, because I do anything to avoid surgery, um, I wanted to really pick it up a little bit more and never felt confident on it. I knew if I got cut kick or started sparring really hard and took a leg kick there, I would, my knee would just... Mm -hmm. tweet so I was always really really nervous and not confident on it uh, got health insurance when I got an MRI and I just did not have any ACL mm -hmm. there so I just, I just kind of withered away probably just snapped in the, in the wreck and kind of went from there yeah. after waiting two years so then I got surgery probably a year after that mm -hmm. and that's when I moved back to Connecticut mm -hmm. in 2006 so yeah it took me a few years to get surgery mm -hmm. Do you still feel it sometimes yeah. when you're working on sex? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. But you they fight said I would it. have a bionic <laughs> knee after it. Your knee's going to be stronger than ever. You're going to be able to jump higher and all this and yeah. that. No. Yeah. I still feel it. But I do feel more confident on it. A little mm -hmm. more confident. A little bit stronger with it. Hi, Hunter. Hi. And how is that <laughs> mentally? Like when you're kind of, when you know you have this injury, but you're fighting and you have like all these other things to be dealing with anyway, like. I think of it in training. I think of it in sparring. I think of it the moment before I get in the ring, the minute I get in the ring, I don't think of anything. Mm. You just it's, it's amazing because, you know, I tell everyone, you're not going to think about that when you're in the ring. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I not going to think about that when I'm in the ring? How are they not going to think about that? But it's, it's, yeah. it's true. Once you get in there, you don't think about that. You don't think about my sprained ankle I had last time yeah. I fought. I didn't think about my broken toes that are killing me every yeah. time I walk during the day. It's like yeah. you just don't feel anything. You're just in the moment for... You know, someone's coming at you with yeah. hands and fists. Yeah. Your injuries don't mean anything yeah. anymore. You just don't want to get anymore. So, I was uh, really surprised when I went to Thailand and you just see this like consistent fighting. People go in who are not that amazing, but you just fight again or you don't. You just kind of wait. Mm -hmm. It's like really not as built up as it is in the states. For Thais or for Farang? For Thais. I mean, Farang get in there for you know the Thai experience or whatever when they really have no business being there, but. Like the kids, like little the kids, kids who just started. Yeah, I mean, how often do we compete in baseball? Yeah. How often do we have soccer matches growing up? Yeah. You know, probably every two weeks is a scrimmage yeah. or something. That's the same thing to them. Yeah. It's just a little bit harder on them where yeah. they're going to quit in their mid-20s and said, you know, we can still play soccer and baseball yeah. up until we're 40, 50, 60, as long as we can move around. Yeah. So it's, it's a very sudden and quick sport almost for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you're all into it, then all of a sudden you're the trainer. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of them end up fighting... Um, stop fighting early because yeah. they're in there so much and it's their livelihood mm. a lot of them are fighting you know to put rice on their table mm. to get themselves through school to 
they don't give them family some money. Yeah. So they are way more driven where that is definitely one of their jobs. Yeah. You're clearly still pursuing and getting better and like working on yourself and then also being a trainer and fighting. Like it's kind of this three branch thing that's actually pretty intense to do all three it at once. It is hard. It is tiring too. Um, a lot of my training, I try not to hold pads too much. Mm -hmm. I try not to hold pads for too many guys especially, mm -hmm. um, especially before a fight. But it is hard. I do try and take a lot of my um, clients that I have or, you know, I have clients for regular fitness or weight loss or strength training. I really never do your hand for one time. Um, I try and get a little bit out of every session that I have with one of my clients. <laughs> So, uh, 6 in the morning, I'm running two miles with my lawyer who wants to do a 5K, so that's, right. you know, two of my miles of the day. Then at class, our 8 o'clock morning class, we go two miles again, so I get another run in then. Mm. And, you know, I try and run a mile at least with all my clients if they're doing some spot. And we get, yeah. <laughs> you know, we get it. And it motivates them to kind of work out with you too. Yeah. So, I do, I do get a fair amount of my um, running in at least yeah. with my clients. Yeah. Which makes it fun. Yeah. I remember before I had my clients running, running six miles all at once to get it over with on my own in the treadmill or, you know, outside. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice to, you know, get them talking and running. And mm -hmm. um, what would you kind of have as a goal for yourself personally in your fight career and for your gym and for your students in a 10-year? I, I myself, I would like to have an MMA fight. Yeah? Yeah. I do, I do, I really want to. Um, I need to work on some other things for sure, but I'd like to try and piece it all together. I'd like to say that I can, you know, do everything that we offer a little bit, you know, have a little bit more knowledge on the jiu-jitsu, have a little bit more knowledge on, in MMA, and just get in there and try it out, put it all together, and see how that works for you. Um, for my gym, I would, like, I would like the kids to keep competing, just keep doing well. Um, get them in some amateur Muay Thai as soon as they're ready for some stand-up. Right now, most of them are doing grappling mm -hmm. tournaments and competitions, which is great for their age. You know, there's mm -hmm. not much more we can offer from there. I don't want them to get in the ring with all these smaller shows mm -hmm. Muay Thai too quickly. Um, they kind of focus on one thing at, at a time, which is nice if they have jiu-jitsu tournaments coming up all summer long, then do jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. You know, when you want to focus on your Muay Thai, then, you know, spend some more time on your Muay Thai. But don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. Don't try and do two classes in it every, every day and mm -hmm. be here and be there and this. You know, focus on one mm -hmm. and get it a good ground in it. So, you know, you just practice it every now and then mm -hmm. um, while you're trying to take on something new. Hey, Chad. Um, so I would like to see the kids fighting. Mm -hmm. We've got some 14 and 15 year olds that are doing really well in jiu-jitsu. I'd like to get them in some Muay Thai fights. And, you know, hopefully the next year there's a handful of them that are really good. Um, and the adults as well, you know, yeah. see them getting in some more amateur fights and, yeah. you know, coming back and wanting to train, seeing yeah. the real experience that you get yeah. out of all the training. You know, yeah. it's kind of the fruits of your labor. Keep training and training. And would you do both? If you really liked MMA, would you still do Muay Thai fights as well? Uh-huh. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I think Muay Thai is like, my love overall, you know. So, I will never stop just doing Muay Thai. Um, I would like to maybe go pro, get paid for a couple of them every now and then, but I think it's going to be harder for a female to go pro around here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have as many, as many office supplier opportunities to fight mm -hmm. as you do. So you're from the area, is that how you chose this as your kind of home base for where you wanted to have your gym, or is this kind of... Well, we were looking around um, in all the towns around this, this way, and a friend of mine who actually was doing our shirts um, had a silk screening shop across the road in the other building, so we just talked to the landlord and we came in, and it was a great old building. Mm. And I remembered it from when I was a kid, it was an old pin shop, my grandmother's <laughs> mom, like, my mom, my great-grandma worked here. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We always used to have safety pins around her house when I was young, which was great when I got into punk rock. I had six pins all over <laughs> and now I would have been two minutes. We just go. Cool. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah, but it, it's a great building. Um, I like the storefront right on the mm. on the roadway. Yeah. Describing to me before how you guys are like pushing tires up the hill and like kicking bags up the hill and like really intense stuff that like if you go to a lot of Muay Thai gyms in the States, you know, people do kind of a cardio kickboxing type of thing or you know, people are allowed to really just put into it as much as they kind of feel that day. 
Yeah. Um, so, in your own experience and what you try to bring for yourself and what you bring for your students, um, what are the particular challenges of the mental versus the physical that you try to really pull together? Mental is uh, keeping yourself motivated mm -hmm. to do it, especially when there's not that many people around mm -hmm. to do it with. You got a few people in class, or you know, you're here, I'm here alone. I've got to get my training. Just, I think the mental aspect, is, you know, changes more with the season than the physical aspect does. Yeah. So just staying motivated to, to keep doing it. You know, as winter comes, you got to change your training up a little bit. We're not mm -hmm. outdoors as much. You got to do something in here. Just stay, uh, keeping it creative, keeping it fun for yourself. You know, keeping other guys inspired to do it behind you, other guys and girls. Mm -hmm. You know, inspired to follow you and do it right behind you and do it with you. You know, watch you do it and watch. Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. All right, join me next time. Yeah. You know, get everyone kind of in the same psych level to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you feel that you kind of um, connect to your opponents at all? Like, do you have relationships with past opponents or do you kind of um, look into them after you fought them or before or anything like that? You know, I try and do a little bit of research before, see how many fights they've had. Usually you can't find too much on YouTube or anything. I pick out their fights. Um, I try not to overly look them up because then you just kind of... Psych yourself out. Yeah, you psych yourself out and you get nervous when you shouldn't be. It's like they're doing the same thing. They're just as nervous as you. So, um, I try and be friendly with them, you know, go to find and say hi, but I haven't really uh, kept any sort of connection with any of them mm -hmm. afterwards. Mostly the other girls who are fighting in the field, mm -hmm. who you have talked to, um, I talked to Heather a lot mm -hmm. from Church Street, and just some other girls, but not really any of my opponents. Mm -hmm. They all seem pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> try and be nice and yeah. say cheers afterwards, have a beer if you can. Yeah. But, Cool. Yeah. So do you feel that there's kind of a, um, I don't know, Muay Thai community that you're uh, part of in a grand scale or kind of a more local one? Or I think it, it, feel like, it feels like it's becoming larger. Mm -hmm. It was more local, I think, because there's quite um, a network in New York, I think, for you girls. It's a little easier for you, which mm -hmm. I felt um, part of. Yeah. For a while, and I still do, and now I feel maybe just because I have a gym, but with uh, social networking making everything so much smaller mm -hmm. today, I feel like you get you get it on a grander scale, mm -hmm. you get you know, notices from other people, and you just communicate with them a little bit more, so it's, it's easier too, because yeah. everyone's doing it via Facebook and email and whatever sort of social network you have out there. Yeah. So it feels like it's getting a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. not smaller, you're just becoming part of a grander scale of things. I think uh, more people are getting interested in women martial arts, mm -hmm. female fighters in general, whether it's MMA or Muay Thai. Um, people are seeming to pick it out and do more of interviewing and you know, interest in it as you are. Mm -hmm. and another guy from New York is doing on uh, a film on girls fight, mm. the life behind the fighter, what they do, mm. as much as you see for guys. You see it all the time for guys, you never really see it for girls, and now it's, you're starting to see that more, the interest a little bit more. Yeah. Right. Good for gaining interest. <laughs>